Hey guys, welcome to Voc Rehab Bootcamp. I'm Nick Fivette. And today I want to talk to you guys about how to argue your case with your VRC. I, I'm pretty sure I've gone over this before, but when your VRC tells you no, you don't have to email me and say they said no. Don't email me as a matter of fact, because I'm just going to send you this video. Some of you guys are putting one, two emails and then you're like, what do I do? She says no. I don't give a rip if she says no. First of all, you have to meet the criteria and what you're asking for has to be something that is allowed. I'm not gonna tell you how to get stuff and how to trick your counselor into giving you stuff you're not supposed to have. I'm not gonna teach you how to lie and pretend you're entitled when you're not. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. What I feel like my responsibility that I put on myself is to communicate information that is honest, legal, usable, easy to understand so you can get what you need. All right, that being said, you have to know what you want. Don't expect your VRC to tell you what, what they, some, some person sent an email, give me a list of all the things I can have. Nobody's doing that, okay? Know what you want. Number two, understand the guidelines. Can I have this thing? And if you can, Write those guidelines down so you can justify it. Number three, explain why your request is necessary. Why do you need it? So they can understand. Don't say I need this because of my service-connected disabilities. That's too broad. I need this $1,000 chair because I have a 70% service-connected disability in my back and I have trouble supporting my head and I'm, I have shoulder trouble, so I need to be able to put the armrest up and down. I can't have them down here because it pulls on my shoulder. I can't have it up here because it hurts my pinch nerve. A lot of times you guys email me and tell me 30 reasons why you need a chair. And I'll go, what did you tell your counselor? And you told the counselor one thing. So you got to do that. Explain why you need it. Explain why your request is allowed. Write that down because VRCs will say, I can't do it. It's too expensive. It's not too expensive based on this guideline. I, I don't have a card. If you don't have a card, you can reimburse me. You know, use your guidelines. And this is the last part that people are getting hung up on. Question any attempt at a denial of what you want. Question it. If, if you have said, I need a chair because I have this SCD. I understand the guidelines. Here's the guideline. It says I can have it. it, it this is why I need it. I need five letters from your doctors. Why do you need five letters from my doctors? You already have documentation. You have access to my records where you see I have an SCD. So are you calling the VA doctors liars? You got to question it. Don't just, oh, now I got to go find five letters. Then you should get one letter because it shows that you're making a good faith effort. A lot of them will ask for a letter and I'll get a letter. But they wanted my doctor to write a letter saying that I could not find any work that did not exacerbate my service-connected disability. That is stupid. No doctor's going to say that. It's not true that I can't find any work that won't exacerbate my service connected. I could find it. Can I obtain it? I don't know. Can I maintain it? I don't know. They just were giving me busy work. So this is what I did. They told me you need a letter that says your service connected disabilities are so severe that it causes problems with you keeping a job. I got that letter. Then they said, it doesn't say you, you can't get a job. Now, if you listen to that and go, oh, now I got to go get a letter that says I can't get a job. The doctor's not going to write that letter. And now they're going to come back and go, you're denied. You have to stop letting them throw information at you. That's illogical. Somebody told me recently that a, a VRC told her, I want to approve you, but your 12 years are up. You're just too late. They didn't even address the SCH situation. And, you know, she didn't know about it. She didn't ask. Oh, she knew about it, but she didn't ask about it. So she just sat there and let him deny her. And then she calls me. He didn't even ask me about my SCA. Did you tell him? Well, no. Come on, y'all. Come on. Another vet contacted me recently. The VRC told him, I think it was a girl. VRC told her, you got to apply for X amount of jobs and bring me all the denial letters. And she's like, how can I get that? You can't get a denial letter. You know you can't get a denial letter. Who in 2021 is saying, I'm sorry, but we decided to hire somebody else in a letter? No. You got to tell them when they ask you. Nobody in 2021 gives a denial, denial letter. That's an illogical request. Are you trying to set me up to fail? When is the last time you got a denial letter? You may get that for a federal job, but nothing else. And even with federal, it could take five months. So I'm supposed to be unemployed for five months. You have to question any, 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 any attempt at a denial.
When I was finding for my entitlement, I said over and over again at each level, why are you pretending? Why are you asking me questions that ignore my statement? You're asking me to go get this stuff, but ignoring the fact that I've already told you I'm entitled. Why are you ignoring it? Why, why, why? And so finally, they couldn't ignore it anyway. They just said, give me somebody else. They were trying to blow me off. Stop letting them do that. That's how you get the VRC to give you what you want. When you send them an email and you say, I need this MacBook because of XYZ. And then she says, no, you can't have it. Why? Why can't have it? The guy, what guidelines? I'm showing you the guidelines that say I can have it. What guideline are you using that supersedes the Congress dictated guideline that says I can have it? I need to know that. And if you can't tell me, I need your supervisor. And if they ignore you, you go to the supervisor. They're ignoring me. I've given them this. They say a guideline exists. Please show me the guideline that says I can't have it. That's how you fight, guys. You can't email me every time somebody says no. I don't have the time, energy. I am one human being. Y'all got to advocate for yourself. The information is there. And if they say no 50 times, you say 51. Why? You're ignoring me. And if they say I'm not answering you anymore, then you say so you're refusing to honor your duty, duty to assist. You're ignoring the Congress dictated guidelines that say I can have it. You're pretending you're using a, a, a guideline to deny me that doesn't exist. It's nowhere in the M2HC. You won't show, it where, show me where it is. I'm in this program. I'm entitled. I'm entitled to it. I need it. And you won't give it to me when you can give it to me based on these guidelines. And now you're ignoring me. You're just cutting me off. What kind of program is this? And then when they don't respond for three days, you go to the next person. Part of the problems that I also see is that your information is all over the place. Be concise. Stop starting it with, I was in Fort Bragg for five years and I broke my, having a big story before you get to the point. Put the point at the top. The VRC does not want to read your five page email. But if you put at the top, if your opening statement is something like this. Dear VRO, I'm sorry to have to escalate this to your level, but my VRC has been ignoring me for two months. They refuse to acknowledge my evidence. They're violating their duty to assist by pretending that the information I'm, I'm giving them is invalid. They're making up rules that are not anywhere in the M2HC. No matter how much I ask, they won't give them to me. And they're, they're putting me in a situation where I'm not getting the benefits to which I'm fully entitled. I'm exhausted. I'm exasperated and frustrated by this process. I'm disgusted at the way I've been treated. Based on this guideline, I'm entitled to X, Y, Z, and I need it based on this justification. And this guideline says I can have it, but my counselor refuses to even acknowledge my existence. Instead, she, instead he or she has been humiliating and degrading to me and disrespectful and won't respond to me, and I need help. That's the opening statement. You summarize all that stuff and basically put that VRO in a position where if they ignore that email, they're going to be in big trouble. That's how you have to do it. Don't start email with, you know, I was born in 1955 on a farm. They don't give a crap about that. Don't do that. Put that powerful statement at the beginning and then give you a justification. I need this because of that. The guideline says I can have it because of this. The VR, the VHA records say I have this service connected disability. Anybody with common sense knows if you have a bad back, you need a good chair. I need a chair. I'm in school. The guideline says I can have it. She keeps saying no. How is this justified? How are you justifying this? And if they come back and say, we can't give it to you. Based on what? I've given you guidelines that say I can have it. How are you guys continually saying I can't based on no justification? Am I just supposed to accept it and ignore the law? Yes, we're not giving it to you. Why are you giving it to me? You keep coming back. And when they say, I'm done, if you don't like it, appeal. Then you go to the assistant VBA director and you say, how is it I justified this to the VREO 52 times? I've told them where I can have it, show the guideline, and they still refuse to give it to me based on a, a guideline that they won't give me that doesn't exist. Is this the normal practice for your VREO to take benefits away from entitled veterans and pretend they don't have access to something that they do have access to? Is that the is that what's happening here? So I've laid those strategies out and that's what you guys need to do. And if you get confused about something, you can reach out to me. But do not forward me a chain of emails and go, what do I do? My counselor said this. Hopefully this will help you understand what to do. You just keep arguing. And if they finally say, I'm not speaking to you anymore, I'm ignoring you, or they stop responding, then you escalate up. 
hang in there. It's sad that you have to work this hard to do this kind of these kinds of things, but it is what it is. If you want what you want, you may have to do this for a while to get what you want to get. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Nick the Vet.